everybody. Welcome back to Life in May 30s. <laughs> Welcome back to another weekly vlog. Welcome back. I wanted to start this one with a little bit of a voiceover while you guys watch me cook. Because if there's one thing that I'm going to do is cook, honey. Okay, but it's really important for me to sit you guys down and talk to you guys a little bit about what a special month this is for me, not only for my work, but for my purposefully driven work, but also for myself. And I want it to be a month where you also consider this as well. So as you know, I'm somebody who is in South Africa and it's like, oh, that's some bulgur wheat in there, girl. Yeah, there's some bulgur wheat in there. I swear, I think sometimes I might be struggling with a bit of ADHD. I don't know. I'm not saying I have it, but my mind. Anyway, <laughs> we are in Mental Health Awareness Month. We're in October. And as I do this voice note, it is October. Mental Health Awareness Month is so important. Not only do you guys know that mental health awareness is very important to the channel, but it's what I do. I am a mental health and self-development coach. So even for me, I have to practice what I preach. Mental health needs to be a very important part of my life. And because this is the month where I do a lot of bookings, I do speaking engagements, I have got really great prices in terms of my coaching sessions and all of that, I tend to invest a lot of myself into this month. But also, I invest a lot into my mental health. And this is where we are. This is a little bit of a mental health check-in. This is what's been going on with me recently. And I have a little bit of a message of the day for you or a message of the week for you at the end of the video where we're going to be talking a little bit about knowing when to detach. But that's different. That's at the end of the video, okay? This is a little bit of a voiceover where I'm talking about my mental health. So I've really been going through it with my mental health. It's up, it's down, it's good, it's bad sometimes. And I think for me, one good thing that I can do for myself in October is to go back to my therapist and my life coach. Yes, I also have a life coach. I can't, I can't life coach a size myself now, can I? No, 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 no. So I also have a life coach who kind of brings me back in order a little bit. Um, and I don't see her all the time. I speak to her every two months or so, but I think it's time for me to go back. And this is the one good thing that I can do for myself, especially in the Mental Health Awareness Month. And the good days, the good days, the bad days, it happens. It just happens. And I think I need a little bit of therapizing, okay, because I've had moments where I am going through it and one thing that makes my mental health take a serious big knock is constantly thinking about finances okay so financial security is a very important thing to me I've got a lot planned for next year I want to go back to school so that's why you'll find when I'm recording my videos that a lot of the time I'm at home I don't spend recklessly I do not I mean of course, there's certain things that I like and I'm going to do them. Like if I want to go out on a cute little coffee date or want to eat out every now and again. I mean, girl, I'm going out today. <laughs> I'm not going out alone, though, but I'm going out today, girl. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm actually sitting in my car as I record this because, you know, you want the voiceover to be good. But for me, financial security is a very, very big thing that makes either my mental health sore or it struggles. And so I've made the conscious decision to actually be very aware of what is going on with my mental health, especially when it comes to financial security. And one of the big things is I've noticed that I also tend to go a lot easier on people that I care about when it comes to how they treat me. I tend to be 
gracious. Whereas with other people, I, I know how to stand up for myself. I know how to fight for myself. But I've noticed that with the ones that I care about, I seem to be struggling a little bit. And there's certain aspects and avenues in my life where there's certain things that I need to just let go of and detach and certain views and opinions and all of that. And I seem to be struggling a little bit. So one thing that I want to say to you, let this be the month where you do a mental health check-in on yourself. It's so important for you to consistently do it. Look after yourself, look after your mental health, but afford yourself that opportunity. I'm doing it too, and I think you can do it too, okay? So let's do it together. 31 days of looking after our mental health for the best. And we will check in at the end of October, and I'll tell you how I'm doing, okay? Cool, bye. <laughs> There we are. There we are. Sunday course done. We've got some bulgur wheat in here with, as you saw, the spring onion and a bit of the robot peppers. Then I've got the sticky pork here with a bit of sauce at the bottom there. As you can see, delish. We've got some butternut just in cheer, I guess, and then salsa. So this is going into the fridge now so I can eat it nice and chilled. But yeah, Sunday course has been prepared with my little non-alcoholic beverage. This is sparkling water with lemon, lots of ice, and this. Let me show you. And this, 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 this. This fruits, forage and feast, grapefruit cordial with cranberry flavoring. Just a tiny bit, like a spoon of this. Delicious to sparkling water. Oh, Lord. Love it. And there we are. We are done. Kitchen is clean, except the lids, which I'm going to go put them back on there. But yeah, pretty much we're done. We're done.
it is another vlog i'm not sure where in the vlog we are all i know is that today is the first of october and as a mental health coach and self-development coach it's a very important month for me because it's mental health awareness month in south africa it's very early in the morning it's literally half past seven i need to be out of this house in uh 20 minutes because normally when i go to work i leave the house at eight and i'm at work by half eight I'm not going into the office i'm going to be showing you my office look makeup look i do not wear the full face of makeup that you guys have seen when i go into the office no i don't um typically i would start with my brows i'm not doing my brows today because i'm going to pass by the brow bar to get my brows threaded um it is very cold today there's a cold front that sweeped the country i think it started in on saturday sunday by the coast I'm having a cup of tea um i think it started on saturday sunday by the coast and it has now hit inland which is here in gyaltaeng uh it hit yesterday started feeling it yesterday so this no makeup makeup look thing um it's just really concealer no liquid foundation i just like to cover up areas that are have high pigmentation or areas that have a little bit uh dark spots or maybe because of an injury or a mark or a pimple or a scab this is pretty much what i do and i blend it in i do not put on any liquid foundation whatsoever when i'm doing a no makeup makeup look and of course around my eyes it's naturally darker than the rest of my face i try to cover those up so that there's just more of an even tone um i need to wash my thingies i'll do that so i just do this I, it's just a full face of essentially concealer <laughs> and on a normal day like i said i'd have my brows done but not today today we're just working on the on the face minus brows um so yeah the weather's kind of been crazy we are in spring of course it's mental health awareness month we're in october in south africa internationally mental health awareness month is in march but in south africa it's in october so for me this is where i secure a lot of clients i'm going to be doing a lot of content on my if you're not following me on my coaching page it is called life by design underscore katleo life by design underscore katleo this is where i talk a lot about things concerning mental health and personal development and i post regularly on those platforms there's tiktok there's linkedin there's facebook so when I tell you, it's not just YouTube, got all my little stuff on Instagram. I do a lot of stuff, okay? Got a lot of jobs. So this is a very important month, of course, for um, what I do. As you can see, see, it's already evened out my skin tone a little bit. And, um, so yeah, so it's a very important month and I want to post quite regularly. I post a lot on there, um, relatively content concerning um mental health and personal development then i follow with powder it's a very quick 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 process this one follow with powder all over my face it's because it's mental health awareness month i also run cheaper rates for my consulting stuff i'll put everything here so that you can check it out i do also speaking engagements and mental health awareness month which I'm really excited and looking forward to so yeah it's going to be a rather busy month but it's a very important month for what i do look at that Pew. done that, that's literally all i do bit of because the canvas is quite blank so i will then also follow with a bit of contour bronzing cream just to give a bit of definition some Where's the brush for it? Some blush as well. So this is Pinch Me by MAC, which is one of my favorite blushes. I really like it. 
just to give a bit of flush on the cheeks, which I really like. And i make this quick. So I really like that it's already hidden all the dark marks, the darkness around the eyes, you know. And besides, I'm with my dad, and I like to look pretty when I'm around my dad, okay? Because people need to know that my dad has got pretty daughters, okay? That's what I'm saying. We need to sit down and talk about dating when you're single. Because it looks like your good sis is headed into that life, hey? And I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's where I want to be. Honestly, I don't really know. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's been a while of me being out of the game, you know, I've been literally single and not dating for nine months now. And it's just like, well, I've got time, you know, got time now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, we should talk about that. It's a little bit tricky. It's just a little bit of flush on the eye. It's so easy. It's so quick. So easy, so quick. It's literally a 10 minute look. But yeah, definitely follow me on my coaching platforms. That's Mental Health Awareness Month is very important and a very close cause to my heart. Okay, we are done. Um, now we're just gonna lay down these brows. Okay, got a little bit of a brow gel here. And just lift and slide babes I mean and that's it that is my everyday makeup look that is it without lashes because I'm looking kind of sad right now um actually I've gotten quite a, a significant amount of book mail from penguin random house I, I just I know I feel so special uh, and some books came in yesterday, so we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to show you that. And I want to talk to you guys about Monsters. The Lyle and Eric Menendez story. Sweetie. Alrighty, I am home. I'm at the family home. You can see the background is a bit different. I am waiting for my dad. I don't know what in the world he is doing, but I'm waiting for him. What is he doing? Waiting for him. Hanya is actually here. It is her school holidays. So she might just pop up either on my left or on my right. But um, yeah, I'm going to step out with my dad shortly. And got a couple of things we need to do. But Hanya is, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hey. <laughs> I got the thing that you got me on on my birthday. Oh, do you wanna tell everybody what I got you? Let me place this up here. Ta -da. I got I got this alicorn, if you haven't noticed. Alicorn? Alicorn. Why is it an alicorn? Because it has wings and a horn. No, but a unicorn has oh because it's got wings. Yeah. So it can fly, but even a unicorn can fly, can't it? No. Oh, unicorns can't fly. They just have this thing here. The way they can only, like, unicorns only have this, but they can also make magic to fly. Oh. But without using wings. And oh, but alicorns have wings. Yeah, and That's a crazy. pegasus has only wings. There's pegasus! That's what I was thinking. Okay. And, and carrots. And carrots. I love that one. Can yeah. you give me that one so I can... Uh, no! No! So that I can sleep with it at home. You and can babysit it, but I don't need, sleep No, it. I need something to cuddle at home. Okay, I got something for you. Ah, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want uh, what's her name? Carrots. Carrots. I want carrots. But, like, this carrot is special. Well, come on. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Oh, this is my favorite. Well, second favorite. This this one's your favorite. Who's who, Which one is your favorite favorite? Is it Sparkles? Yeah. Okay, so let me have... I'm thinking Hanya should give me Carrot. No. Why not? Because Carrot is my... Carrot is the first stuff you got. Okay. Who bought it for you? Mommy? No. Who? Uh, Grandpa. 
Really? Yeah. Let me see. Oh my god. Oh. You love me so much. <laughs> you you die. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm fine, fine. How are you gonna call me that? So how are you at school? Fine, fine. How are your school mm -hmm. holidays? Good. So why are you now people can't see you because starlight is in front of you. Sparkle. Spark move sparkles away. There you go. So how are your school holidays? Good. What do you do all day? Well. Mm-hmm. Eat breakfast. Yeah. Have you had breakfast this morning? Not yet. Yeah, it's still it's still pretty early. Okay, and uh, sleep and watch TV. Yeah. And watch YouTube. Mm. Do you, do you still and watch also YouTube? Watch, and also watch Raven's Netflix. Home. And Raven's Home. Oh, Raven's Home. Is it on Netflix? No, it's on Disney Plus. Oh, so you're watching Disney Plus there by your phone? Yeah. I love it. It's, it's pretty not my cool. Phone. It's mommy's phone. Yes. Yeah, but 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 like you use it all the time. You kind of stole it from her, basically. <laughs> you kind of jacked her phone. Okay. What um, do you do? That's fine. No, this was actually mommy's first phone. I know. Mommy's got a lot of phones. She's got like three phones. Four. Four. Yes. See, that's why she can let you use that one. She doesn't mind. Also, the green one. Which green one? Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 fancy. Yeah. All right, well, say bye-bye to everybody. Bye. Tell them that you're going to see them later. See you later. <laughs> see you guys later. Bye. Have you seen that TikTok or video or clip or meme or whatever it is with the little girl who's coming out of her father's car? She's like, boy, boy. <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, it's another day. I don't know where we are in the world uh, in terms of days, but got some bookish mail here that I want to share with you. But before I start with all of that, I mentioned in the last clip, which I don't know how long ago it was taken, but I mentioned the Menendez brothers uh, on Netflix and just sharing my thoughts as somebody who watches a lot of true crime. I watch the documentaries. I watch the adaptations of true stories, whether on Netflix, you know, cults, true crime listen whatever paranormal stuff i love dark and mysterious anything content and i think the whole world has shifted to loving it uh, i've got my glasses on because uh, i need to stop staring at screens basically <laughs> but essentially i loved it from a production standpoint from a filming standpoint from how it looks visually on the screen to the acting i flipping love monsters uh the lyle and eric menendez story it's on netflix if you want to check it out i was following the case for many i would watch documentaries on it i would watch true crime videos on it on like youtube and things like that and let me tell you, I absolutely loved this production. Yes, I do agree with many a people when they say that um, the representation of the brothers, talking about how it could potentially look like the brothers had some kind of relationship or whatever, uh, for me that was just like, uh-uh, 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 you know? and how it made the brothers to come across and seem as these entitled, self-absorbed, just rich kids that are on a high about wanting to off their parents because they wanted the 
inheritance money. They wanted their parents' money, but they wanted to get their parents out of the way. Yes, the story does depict that, but it also does depict from very different angles. The story on Netflix, it also depicts from very different angles. And I enjoyed that. And I think the whole premise of film production, especially when you're doing some sort of production that is based off of a true story, to bring in different elements that make it suitable for film or for TV or whatever series so that people can enjoy it, right? As much as I may disagree with certain points about the production from uh, Ryan Murphy's perspective, I do think it was great to bring in different conceptual elements that leave the watcher or the viewer thinking, huh, what could the potential story actually be here? You know, it leaves you with the whole notion that um, what could the potential story be here? And I think that was fantastically done. I really do. Um, but yeah, I just don't agree with some of the points that were highlighted in the series. But outside of that, in terms of entertainment value, I think it is something you would definitely enjoy, especially if you are a true crime lover. Uh, books that came in, before I just have a little quick chit chat with you, I really do appreciate the fact that so many of you loved the previous vlog. The numbers of that previous vlog did really well within the first five days. I was actually so impressed as compared to my other vlogs. They did really well and I really hope that you guys can keep showing the vlogs that much love and keep showing the videos as much love. I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of a difference and I really appreciate and thank you guys for it so, so much. Um, but before we have a little chat about a little word of the day, I think it's so good to have these little word, word of the days or things that I've learned recently in the last week, two weeks, whatever about myself or about the ones that are around me or whatever, I think is a great way to either begin or end a vlog. And I would love your opinion on that. If you do agree, let me know in the comments below. But I've been getting book mail recently. And let me tell you, not from Jonathan Bo Publishers, but from Penguin Random House. So exciting. So, so, so exciting. So I wanted to share with you the books that I got so I can get rid of these brown paper bags. Uh, the first delivery came in about a week ago. Hey, hey, about a week ago. Okay. And got a little bit of a book here. The Penguin Random House bookie. The Penguin Post. So this is good. Just talks about all the books that are in the Penguin Random House stable, which I'm excited to have a look at. But what I'm very excited about is this. This is by Elif Shafak. This is the latest book called There Are Rivers in the Sky. Can we talk about that cover? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's a yes. And I already have two books by Elif Shafak. One is here. <sighs> This is the Island of Missing Trees, which I haven't read. And another one that I haven't read, which is called The 40 Rules of Love. It's over there. So I've heard wonderful things about Elif Shafak and I want to, re uh, and about their books, and I want to read their stuff. And now that this has landed up in my book mail, I think it's really important to just kind of start one book by Elif Shafak, okay? Um, so yes, this is a story of one lost poem, two great rivers and three remarkable lives all connected by a single drop of water. Oh my God, really? Okay. And then yesterday I was at the office and this landed up on my office desk and I've had a look at them. So I'm so excited. Nailway, if you're watching, thank you because I know you're the one making this stuff happen <laughs> uh got another cooking book and recipe book and i'm happy i'm happy for the recipe books babes i'm literally growing my recipe book collection so this one is called simply jamie celebrate the joy of 
food and this is midweek meals weekend wins trusty tray bakes mm. cupboard love and perfect puds pudding <laughs> but my two favorite ones are these tiny ones tiny babies this is wisdom from africa a collection of proverbs and i was looking at this yesterday at the office because i did open it at the office and there's proverbs from all over africa in the language and then in english and then it explains what the proverb means so we've got from lesotho kenya namibia tanzania nigeria south africa ghana listen we've got from senegal the gambia uh from everywhere i, I just love it oh i i cannot wait i cannot wait to just go through it i think these are great ones to have as sort of like a coffee table book kind of set up like in the lounge when if people are going to sit and they see some books and then they can pull one up this is great it's one of those ones that's really cool cute to have on there and then this one is oh so this one is by diane stewart it's a collection compiled by diane stewart and then here we have the four-way path the indian secret to a life of happiness and purpose this one is by hector garcia and Francesc Morales and it, the forward is done by Shashi Tarur. Tar Tar okay. And the Indian spirituality points the way to a life of true and lasting fulfillment. Virtue. What can I offer the world? Freedom. Who am I in the truest sense? Prosperity. What do I need to sustain my life? And love. What do I love doing? Oh. Woo beautiful that's nicely explained i love that why is my sister whatsapping me so thank you very very much very much as always you know i get excited when i receive books it is literally the highlight of all my days so thank you so much to penguin random house for this amazing collection of books love them huh. hi let me take these off because now the light and the reflection is going to be a bit intense. So I'm going to wrap up this video here. And this is going to be the message of the day or of the week. So every single time that I upload a vlog, I'll have a moment where I just share a little bit of a thought of the day, message of the day, message of the week, something you can take into your new week with you or the next day, whatever it may be. Sometimes I might do it as a voiceover. Sometimes I might just sit here and speak to you guys for a while. So um, earlier on today, I put up a tweet and I'm going to read the tweet out for you if you're not following me on twitter or x rather i put up a post on x and if you're not following me on there you should because i've got two accounts on x the life by design account for my coaching stuff and then i've got gato malela which is just me uh saying stuff whatever you know so i put up a i said i posted this master detachment you don't want to keep yourself connected to people who couldn't care less whether you're there or not. You can't set yourself on fire to keep others warm. And I think many of us have already heard that phrase before. I'm sure if you're somebody who follows a lot of um, thought leaders when it comes to personal development, when it comes to attachment styles, when it comes to whatever it may be. Um, self-development and self-growth and all of that and i am in this phase of my life where i am trying to master detachment now if you don't know much about attachment styles i think i may have spoken about this in previous videos where people have different attachment styles and chances are how you develop this attachment style is largely because of how you grew up so what happened in your childhood that may have impacted you so much so that you become a certain attachment style as you grow older now a great book for this which i'll show you is this one 
this is a really good book. I started reading it, but of course, with the personal development books, self-love, self-help books, whatever, that kind of thing, you don't consistently have to read it back to front as you would a fiction novel. So this, you can read it, put it down, come back to it at some point if you're thinking about it, whatever. This is The Attachment Solution by Sharice Cook. How to develop strong, secure, and lasting relationships. This was really good at helping me identify my attachment style. When I started reading it, it helped me identify my attachment style. And I already knew that I am an anxious attacher, so I anxiously attach to people. And there's different types. So there's anxious, there's avoidant, there's secure. And... The secure attaches, as you can imagine, are people who understand that we are different, that they don't hold on because of fear of this. They had a more stabilized form of uh, introductory into the world in terms of their childhood. Then you have anxious attaches, which <laughs> us, we struggle with. Uh, we have a fear of abandonment. We have a fear of letting go of people, of relationships. And I mean relationships in the sense, yeah, uh, intimate relationships or friendships or things like that. And it's because it draws from the fact that we have a fear of abandonment. So something may have happened in our childhood that triggered the feelings and emotions that are associated with abandonment. So it could be, you know, divorce between your parents. It could be... Um, the treatment of your mother or whatever and be, to you or father to you, whatever it may be, that we really struggle with the feelings of abandonment. So with ever, whatever our relationships are, we try and invest so much so and overly so into keeping those people around, your friendships, uh, keeping those relationships working, surviving, thriving, uh, the relationships with your partners, relationships with your family members, that kind of thing, because you fear that someday someone is going to let go. And for me, that is one of my biggest fears. And I've been learning uh, I'd like to say this year, I've been learning a lot more about attaching and attachment styles and things like that. And in the same breath, I also learned more about mastering detachment. At some point, there's certain things that you know that you need to detach from. As much as it may be hard, it might be hell on earth, um, <clears throat> I told you guys uh, well, I've been I've been single for months and months and months now. But I told you that I'd gone through a relationship breakup and I had to detach. And let me tell you, <laughs> hardest time of my life. And I'm still kind of going through it. I've been single and not really dating for the pretty much the whole of this year because I was trying to figure myself out and I learned a lot about attachment styles in that period but I also learned that it's so important to learn to detach to learn to be okay with letting certain things go you know if a friendship is not working be okay with it you know uh let it go because you need to kind of remember what it is that you bring to the situation and if the person doesn't see that or if the person doesn't give you the same sort of reciprocation in that relationship whatever it may be whichever space in your life that relationship is if they cannot see that if they cannot see how you are really giving it your best shot hear me with your best shot if they can't see that you're giving it your best shot or they can see it and they refuse to do anything about it they couldn't care less then maybe it's time for you to detach because at the end of the day you cannot set yourself on fire to keep other people warm our biggest thing as anxious attaches is that we want to um overcompensate right because we want people to always know that we're going to be there i'm the support friend i'll always be there i'll always whatever that we end up setting ourselves on fire in the sense that we end up 
allowing people to treat us a certain way which is not conducive for our own healing and growing and evolution and the growth of the friendship or the relationship or the family relationship it's not conducive for us because we are having to compromise and sacrifice so many things that already put us in such a detrimental position just for the sake of making the other person happy. So if the other person says this is where this is where they want you to be, you are willing to be there because you just don't want to lose them. You don't want to you don't want to remember the feelings of abandonment. You're afraid that they will abandon you in terms of they'll walk away from you and all of that. So you don't have to set yourself on fire to keep others warm. Because at the end of the day, who's keeping you warm? You know, and if it comes at the expense of you having to be okay with making very difficult decisions, it's okay. Because like I said in the previous vlog, the people who are for you will choose to stand by you. The people who are for you will choose you every day. Whether it's your friends, whether it's what, they will choose to work on the friendship. You know what I'm saying? There is a friendship of mine that for the first time in my life, as much as I'm an anxious attacher, but for the first time in my life, this particular friendship of mine was not going good. It was on the rocks, it was on the everything. And I just said, enough enough if it fades if it ends if it whatever then so be it because i'm not at the point anymore where i'm going to keep setting myself on fire where i'm going to keep being the friend who's initiating trying wanting to talk about things wanting to do whatever and then being ignored and then having the person come back when they feel like it and then i have to then acclimate myself and be like ah oh, sorry they, they're back they didn't abandon me no 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 so that is the message of the day maybe learn what kind of attachment style you are because there's anxiouses there's avoidant attachments and they are the worst of the worst <laughs> i've got friends who are avoidant attachments i've been in relationships with avoidant attachments and things like that those people are really really hard to navigate around especially as an anxious attacher because they they give off because of their traumatic experiences they've learned to kind of be so hyper dependent dependent on themselves they know how to switch things off and switch them on including their emotions including their all of this but they are not that is the opposite of what an anxious attacher will do and it's frustrating for an anxious attacher it's so frustrating anyway so learn what kind of attachment style you are and then when you're there after that learn how to master detachment because it's okay it's okay some relationships are for a season some relationships are for a reason they're meant to teach you something. And when I talk about relationships, I mean all kinds of relationships, as I always say. Don't always attribute it to intimate partners. It can be intimate partners, but it can be your friends and your family as well. Some are meant for a season. Some are meant for a lifetime. Some are meant for a reason. Somebody's just going to come into your life for a particular reason, and then they're out. So it's not even as long as a season, really. Um, but I think... <laughs> well, coming off of the back of the fight or flight thing that James and Fuhard said shits and gigs sometimes what are you going to choose to do in your life maybe consider that what are you going to choose to do in your life for your life are you going to fight are you going to flight are you going to freeze or are you going to fawn which one is more important for you and for your life as much as we can say we can fight for those that we love, that's great. If you're a fighter for those that you love, that's fine. But know when it's time to detach. Know when it's time to let go. But for your particular life, what are you willing to do? Are you going to fight for it? Are you going to run from it? 
Are you going to run from your traumas and your demons? Are you going to run from doing the work that it takes for you to evolve as a human being and to grow and to heal yourself so that all the things that you are suffering from do not break other people? Or are you going to fawn or freeze? I'll see you in the next video.